So here's a question I get asked rather often, and it's something that I see come up in forums, but I've never seen anybody make a video about it. And there are a lot of people who just aren't familiar with how standalone hardware works, especially different generations of it. If you didn't experience it the first time around, then you're probably play, playing a little bit of catch up with understanding it. So the short answer, and this will help you if you don't want to watch past minute one of this video, the short answer is that you don't use your MPC 2000 XL or 60 or 3000 or um, 2000 Classic. I think I got them all. You don't use them with your computer. Now, you can use them with your computer, but let me just say that there's no USB connection on this, the 60, the 3000, or the 2000 Classic. It just doesn't exist. So it's not like you're going to hook up a USB um, from your laptop to this kind of unit. You're also not going to hook it up with a SCSI cable to your laptop. That's just not going to happen. The only way that you're going to connect to your computer, let me go over here to, to this MPC that's turned around that we can actually see. The only way you're going to connect, let me just move this one out, is either through MIDI. Okay, and there's a variety of things that you can do with MIDI in a computer. I don't get too heavy on that stuff myself, I don't bother. But you could potentially use an MPC 2000 XL or the other ones I mentioned as a controller for your DAW. I don't see why you would. Maybe some people do it and they love it. And that's just something that I'm missing out on. But that's really for controlling, in my opinion, for controlling other samplers, other hardware, like effects, other synths, drum machines, and things like that. Because these are commonly replacing a DAW. They're like an outboard DAW. These are amazing sequencers. And there are actually people who never use a, a sound coming out of them. They only use them to sequence their other equipment because they, they love the sequencer setup. Now, before I move on to the second way that you'll connect your XL or whatever else to the computer, let me just point out on this MPC-1000, it does have a USB connection. That means that you can hook this up to your computer and manage files. It doesn't make it a controller, but what it does allow you to do is access the hard drive if you have one installed, or the CF card that's on the front. We'll talk about CF cards and 2000 XLs in a second. I just wanted to get that out of the way. The other way that you okay, there we go. The other way that you're going to use that you're going to connect your MPC to your computer is the audio outputs. There are, I don't know if I can get a good shot of this. It's pretty close to the wall. Nope. Sorry about that. I can go over here. So there are two stereo output or yeah, a stereo output on this. So left and right, and that you would connect to your computer. But if I go back here again, these don't have the expansions, but you can see that there's actual outputs. See where those holes are, those empty holes, one to eight. If you have the expansion board, that means that you have not only the two stereo outputs, but you also have eight individual outputs that you can route into your computer. So it's not going directly into your computer like the microphone input, that would sound terrible. What you need is a sound card for your computer, an interface, a way for the audio signal to go from here into your computer. Now, just an aside, some units have digital in out. You can connect to your laptops or computers, soundboard or sound card if they have digital in out. I'm not gonna get into that. I don't really use that myself. So when you're using the outputs, whether they're the stereo outputs or the individual eight, they are going to go into your computer sound card or interface, like I mentioned. And I'm going to show you an example of one right now that's very inexpensive. I think it works great. But there really are a lot of options out there. 
A lot of people have an interface that only has stereo ins, meaning uh, two channels, left, right, which can be stereo or channel one and two. There are also a lot of, oh, that's gotta glue that down. There are also a lot of sound cards that have four inputs. This one happens to have 10. Eight here with the XLR inputs. This one's for drumming mostly, drum inputs. But hey, when you have an MPC 2000 that has the eight outputs, looky here what you can do. So what this will do is you can send all of your individual tracks into this, and this Tascam unit and any other interface similar to it hooks up to your laptop via USB, and you record directly into your DAW, and it tracks them out if you have individual tracks. Now, if you have, say, eight sounds that are on your MPC, but you're only using your stereo outputs, say one and two here, then when you track it in, you're only going to get two tracks, either one and two or stereo. And when you have stereo, that means that the tracks are not separated. You would have the kick with the snare, with the hi-hat, with every other sound that you have playing would go to the same track. So you can't EQ each sound individually. And that's the big draw for a lot of individual outputs and interfaces with individual inputs like this, is that you can track, it's called tracking, track each of the tracks from your MPC into this, which goes into your laptop or computer, into your digital audio workstation. So some people don't mind doing this stereo only, like one, two channels. Other people prefer individual outputs like this so they can affect everything differently. It really depends on the project that you're working on in your work style. So that's how you're gonna get the sound from the MPC 2000 XL or 2000 or whatever else. That's how you're gonna get it into your laptop and either into whatever you're recording with software-wise or into your DAW. Now, let me say something else here. If you have an MPC that has a CF card or an SD card, or even floppy or zip disk, you can buy USB adapters for really cheap that have SD connections, CF connections, um, zip drive connections. There's there are a lot of different ways to, to take out whatever storage medium you have in here. This one's CF. But if you have a disc, like I said, floppy disk, whatever, and you have the correct interface for it for under 20 bucks, you can take that floppy drive that plugs into your laptop via USB and you can upload and download files from that disc. And that's a file management system that allows you to work with the computer and get your sounds into the MPC. So I could take out the CF card, put it in my CF card reader that has a USB connection to my laptop, manipulate or manage any files on that CF card, take it out of the adapter and slap it back into the MPC and it will have everything that I wanted. So it's a good way to back files up. It's a good way to import samples that you wanna play. And yeah, that's basically how you're going to be using your MPC with a computer. I just want to take a second here. Maybe I'll do a quick scan around the, my studio just to show you what I have. Well, I'm thinking because there may be something that I forgot that I want to add. So let's just do a quick scan while I think. Aha. There we go, I just remembered something. So I mentioned in the early part of the video that I like to use the MIDI in the outs from the MPC. Let me just get a shot of that. It's got two in, two out. 16 channels each, but we won't get into that. And so those ins and outs are connected to this synth and this synth. And so here again is where you can think of this 
as a DAW-less DAW, a computerless DAW, I guess you could say. Because with this, I can completely control and play back these synthesizers. You can hook up, like I said, your MIDI to your laptop and do a variety of things with it. Probably even be a controller. I, But like I said, I really don't have experience with that, so I don't want to speak to that. So is there anything I missed about how you use an MPC with your computer? I don't think so. I think I covered everything I wanted to say. Something else I will mention. I did remember something. Good thing I just scanned like that. That was good to take a breath. So the idea that a lot of people have about outboard gear like this is that they don't want to import samples into it. What they want to do is send audio in. So say I was sampling this keyboard. People really like the analog digital converters, the ADCs and the DCAs, the opposite digital analog converters, DACs rather. So if I was recording this into the inputs in here, if you have it set correctly, if you're, you know, you got a good gain on it, it means it's very loud going in. People say that samplers will impart some character, uh, some more than others. This one is not necessarily known for imparting character, but some people say that it does still impart some character and that they don't want to import samples via a card. They want to record it directly in. And this again is where it's different than working with a computer because a lot of people like to make their own libraries and make their own samples and then use it strictly on here. That said, I like both. I have a bunch of Mars kits that I have on here that I love that I think they sound great. And I loaded them up from the computer onto the CF card and now they play here. But I have other cards where every sample on it is something that I've created and not imported. So that's how you're going to use your MPC probably. If you're looking for something just to work with your DAW and you don't need the outboard sound, you don't need the sampling capability, and you don't want antiquated storage media like CF cards, then grab a controller because the interface is amazing. I've never used an Akai controller that's similar to an MPC, but everything I've, I've heard, everything I've seen, it, it all points to they're, they're awesome. They're every bit as good as hardware. It's just some people prefer hardware and myself included. I like the best of both worlds. I love my laptop and my DAW that I use and I like the outboard gear. So there we go. I hope that helped. I know I let it carry on for quite some time, but you know, I didn't want to miss anything and yeah, hopefully that helps some people. Thank you for watching. Have a great day.